Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and in today's video I'm talking about why I left Amsterdam and why I think that uh, moving out of big cities might be one of the smartest things you can do right now. Okay, so over the past few years I've been killing myself to create a life for myself in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Spending a long time in debt, paying off bills, I seemed to feel like money was just a black hole. No matter how much I earned, I just lost everything. Uh, money came in and money went out and I never saw anything on my bank account. I constantly had to save on everything and though I engaged in very tight budgeting, you know, I found it almost impossible to afford a life for myself in a studio in Amsterdam. With the prices the way they are and how things are increasing, this year I had to move to a new place. And while I started looking on the Dutch housing market, I eventually realized that you know, why am I even doing this? Why am I even paying for this? Why am I even, you know, a part of this, right? And here I realized that, you know, I'll never have time to engage in my personal dreams. I won't have time for writing. I won't have time for creativity. I won't have the time I want for being out in nature, for socializing, for meeting up with people, for living life, because I have to work. I have to work long hours to keep up with all the demands of modern big city life, right? And I think, you know, regardless of your 16 personalities type, you probably share that dream with me. I think most people, most millennials feel that if they lived in a big city, they'd be a lot happier and everything would be a lot easier. And, you know, the idea if you live in a big city is that the big city provides so much opportunity, friends, connections, events, things you can do. And so, you know, I couldn't imagine myself living anywhere else. This is where I have to be. But then you have to ask yourself, how much time do you even have to spend on those things, right? A lot of the time, what I see is people are paying for the opportunity to engage in these things rather than the experience itself, which means we're working such long hours and we're so stressed by our day job that we don't even have time to consider most of these things. And while sure, certainly we can engage with it on the weekend or like a little bit, that's just a few hours of our life, right? And here we have to start thinking about, you know, how do I write and design my own life, you know? And where do I want my hours to go? And how do I want to experience and engage in these kind of things? And here, the answer I drew was, the answer was minimalism. The answer was lowering my expectations. The answer was moving away from Amsterdam. The answer was scaling down. And so I had to have a very heavy conversation with my boss. I had to tell him, I need to go fully remote. I can only work from outside the office and uh, I'm gonna need to go down to 20 hours. <laughs> and uh, I think, you know, while he wasn't happy with that kind of arrangement, he did understand my point of view. And from his point of view, he said, you know, for me, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I just have to check with the board first. <laughs> so, you know, it was a discussion, but eventually they were really kind enough to give me what I wanted and to help me out. And so from uh, August onwards, I'm going to be living in Barcelona, Spain. And while certainly Barcelona is still a big city, it's a small compromise. And that's something I think I'm almost getting famous for. I'm the king of small compromises. While everyone says, you know, take the leap, you know, go get a van, go travel the roads, you know, uh, just give up everything, quit your job, you know, like do that thing, you know, I'm always like, you know, uh, actually, I kind of like some safety. I kind of like some roots. I kind of like some, you know, base. I don't really want to just jump straight off a cliff. I kind of want to dip my toes in the water first to see how it feels. And so my philosophy seems to a lot of the time center on these kind of small steps, these kind of slow change, slow travel. And I think that's a concept that I think would appeal to a lot of people because not all of us are big daredevils ready to, you know, in a minute's notice, quit our job and, you know, go to another place. For me, the discussion that I had with my boss took uh, many, many months of planning. And I spent a lot of time looking over my budget, looking over my options, looking over different cities, thinking about how I could best arrange everything. I started planning this out last year. And I had so many different vision boards, plans to just see how I can make it happen. And eventually, you know, uh, while I did have the nuclear option as an option, if nothing else was possible, I made sure that I had a steady uh, amount of savings. I made sure that 
I had what was necessary. I compromised in the short term, worked really hard uh, to just make it possible, right? Because uh, I think uh, a lot of the time we make change so big that we make it impossible for ourselves, right? Because a lot of the people, they pay with, you know, the idea of either I stay in my job, nine to five, you know, where I am, do nothing ever again. Or I make this big drastic change and tomorrow it has to happen right now or never, you know, like, and these kinds of extremes, I think, are a recipe for unhappiness because this kind of black and white thinking, you know, it means that no matter what choice you make, you're going to be unhappy. If you stay, you're going to be miserable because you gave up on a lifelong dream. If you'd go on your lifelong dream, you're going to find out that actually it wasn't all it cracked out to be and it was actually quite hard and you're, you lost all your friends and you lost everything that you had and, you know, you had to start over from scratch and everything was really difficult, right? And so I think we should all be considering, you know, what are middle road options? What are our options that can make things easier for us? What are ways to keep and make the transition more simple for us? For example, you know, the idea of quitting your job, moving to another country can be quite difficult. Perhaps you can, you know, go down in hours, work remote and then go to another place. Or perhaps you can take a hiatus and you can say, I want to take a month or two away, you know, to be somewhere else and um, come back later after. Or, you know, you can have all these kinds of arrangements, right? And you can, you know, you don't have to quit talking to all your friends. You can still call them once a week or check in with them, you know, when you have time or when they have time and when you want to. And so, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to literally throw everything out of the window. Minimalism is the idea that we slow and simplify things for ourselves. And while we can think of minimalism as decluttering at home and keeping things small and simple. Minimalism can be applied to decision-making too. Minimalism can be about not, you know, making big changes, but making small incremental changes. And that's the kind of philosophy that I think is vital to improving your happiness, well-being, and personal growth. We think that change happens like a big thing, you know, it's a big revelation and suddenly our life goes upside down, 180 degrees. We go from, you know, being one kind of person, being completely different. And while certainly it can be like that a lot of the time, most of the time, I think change is quite slow and incremental. It takes a lot of time. It's a five minute a day kind of effort. And so, for example, when I'm moving to Spain, I have this kind of idea that, you know, I don't want to just be there and engage myself in digital nomad expat culture. I want to learn Spanish. And so I started learning Spanish a couple of months ago. And, you know, I'm halfway past A1 at this point and approaching A2. And I'm just so happy that I feel like when I get there, I'm going to be able to at least string together somewhat intelligent conversations, right? I'm at least going to be able to ask them how they're doing. I'm at least going to be ask them, uh, able to ask for directions. I'm at least about able to understand what the people say at the cafe, right? And, you know, these kind of things, you know, make me feel like, you know, okay, yeah, you want to be a digital nomad. Yeah, you want to travel the world. Yes, I do want to do those things, right? But I want to actually live locally too, right? I don't want to just be a digital nomad living from my home office, spending all my time on the computer with my employers and clients. I want to be able to, you know, go to events in the local area. I want to learn about different places in the city where I live. I want to, you know, contribute to the area somehow, create and be a part of a community somehow, because I feel like, you know, Yes, digital, being a digital nomad is great, but not if you're doing it alone, not if it makes you feel like you don't have anyone, not if it makes you feel like, you know, you're going to end up completely isolated with a lot of acquaintances all over the world, but no true friend, right? I want it to feel real and I want it to feel authentic and I want it to happen step by step. And so the idea is I'm starting out in Spain, Barcelona, because it's close to Amsterdam. It's not a huge shift. It's not a huge transition. It's just a stepping stone to something else. And what that something else is, well, I'm juggling with some couple of different ideas, traveling the US for a month or two, then perhaps going to Asia or South America. It all comes down to, you know, like you can have this idea of what you want to do and where you want things to go. But you also have to try to keep an open mind because a good traveler has no clear end destination, right? That's the Lao Tzu quote. That's the short of it is basically... Keep an open mind to the opportunities that are presented to you. And so, like, if you do find a cool place in a cool city, you know, 
don't be afraid to leap because the truth is no matter what you pick you're never going to end up or you're never going to know what you're going to end up with anyways <laughs> because I am have no clue who I'm going to meet in Barcelona no clue what I'm going to do there no clue what my life is going to be there I have some clues of things I could want to do but ultimately I don't know what I will eventually experience as I get there because what I experience might be completely different and so you have to have this kind of idea this kind of openness where you kind of surrender to an experience right because while my instinct is plan everything out, think of every option, think of every eventuality, get it all down on paper so I can never be surprised ever again. I realize I'm going to be surprised <laughs> regardless. And so I kind of also have to just surrender to that. When that happens, when the surprise comes, I'm just gonna have to surrender to it and accept that that's what's going to happen.